Hello, 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 and welcome to my how to fix your air still. Now, uh, a lot of people have air stills. A lot of people, sadly, can use and abuse them, either deliberately or by accident, but they do break down. Everything breaks down. You can't really buy spare parts from air st uh, from still spirit. But you sometimes can find them on eBay and other places like that, uh, where someone has, they've got a broken still, they strip down for parts and sell them. So you can get things like the coils, which realistically should never break because obviously there's no moving parts in there. Um, I knew somebody who um, uh, had left it in their garage, didn't realize there was a bit of a leak in the garage uh, and the actual motor inside uh, rusted and then broke. So they were able to go onto eBay and actually buy a second hand, um, half of the motor, the, the bit that obviously actually moves, uh, that was clean and fixed it. Brilliant. Now, if you want to have a look at how you adjust the head, rather than doing it in this video, uh, if you want to click in the link above, I've got uh, another video of how to deep clean and how to strip down the head, uh, and that will be better to go and have a look. So what this video is more about is the base unit and how to open this up. It's, it's relatively easy, it can be fiddly. You've got one nut slash bolt on the bottom to undo, and there's a little bit of a, uh, a spring washer underneath it. The problem you've got though, is that the actual base, this, this has been pushed on quite tightly. So when you unscrew it, you have a look around to see if there's any areas that are uh, slightly raised. And if they're raised, you can get a screwdriver and pop it under. The other way I tend to do it is just knock it like this in different locations, and then it will pop off. If it doesn't, you might need to get a flat blade screwdriver underneath the lip and just, just prise it slightly. Don't twist it. If you do, you'll kink and dent the edges. So just, just try and raise it and it will come off. Right, let's have a proper look in the insides. I'm going to pop this off. Now this has already been undone, so it's going to come off a lot easier. Straight boring old metal, and there's the insides. So you've got here your mains electricity coming in, your mains electricity going out to the head, your heating element here. There's your reset button, so obviously if it boils dry. And that's pretty much it. It's quite easy. It goes through, obviously both of them are earthed, and then the mains electricity comes in, and this is a, a thermostat, which is this, basically. All right, well, it looks like that in there. Now, be careful if you do take this off, because it's covered in gunky stuff, which is difficult to get off. So now this is a thermostat. Uh, generally, they're at 120 um, degrees Celsius, 10 amps rated. These all push on and pull off connectors, so you can pull them off like this. So if your device, there we go. If, if this has stopped working and you get a multimeter and you push on here, it should be normally closed. So you're getting a, a continuous uh, through. When you push, when it resets or when it trips, it goes not open circuit. You push this bit of plastic and it will go closed circuit again. So if it's closed circuit, you it won't let you push it in. Your multimeter is saying there's no electricity going between those two pins. This is the thermostat that's broken. What you do there is you've got two little lugs here, and then two lugs there. So you have to prise them open with a screwdriver, and you can pop out this thermostat. Um, and you can have a look on eBay or Amazon or other places for this thermostat. Um, yeah, it's relatively easy. And they all have the same blades. And it's just a, a small little wiring loom, which then obviously links in. Now, the next part is the neutral. You can see just hide behind here. And there's a little device there, which actually is this. Now, this is heat, like a protection of film. And what it's protecting is that device there. And that is a thermal fuse. That This one here states that it is a... 157 degrees Celsius, 10 amps at 250 volts AC. So what this does is that will trigger and break. Unfortunately, it is a break like an ordinary fuse and a plug. That will break if this gets over 157 degrees Celsius. 
Uh, the idea for this is the fact that if there's an issue with this unit and the wiring is getting a short circuit, but it's, it's kind of like a safe short circuit or it's dragging too much electricity to your consumer unit, your fuse box isn't tripping because technically it's safe. These wires could all heat up and could get very dangerous. Therefore, that will trip if it goes over 10 amps. And this shouldn't be pulling anywhere near that. It, it's a couple of amps or three, two, three amps, I think. Uh, I can't really remember. But anyway, if it goes over 10 amps or over 157 degrees Celsius, that thermal fuse will break. Now, that's the only other thing. So obviously, you've got the thermostat and then the thermal fuse. Um, pick those up on eBay. Now, with the connectors, these are just crimps. As you can see, it's just a folded over crimp. And the same on this side, if I pull this protector off, as I get it off, there we go. Obviously, that's got a spade on there as well. So all it would mean is you'd need to prise apart these, get a new thermal fuse, which you can get from a lot of different places, and then just tie in another one. And they come with a lot longer cable, so you just need to trim them off, trim them off and then uh, put them back in here. Obviously, if you're having issues, you can buy another spade. I believe these are 4.3 mil. Uh, I can't honestly remember. But uh, yes, you can just replace it as you see fit. Uh, don't forget, though, to put this, this sheet back over it because that helps from this touching the case. Because if you remember, this whole case is earth. So you do not want that, which is neutral, touching the earth because it will fry. And that's it. There is no other areas in here. Uh, technically, yes, if this heating element does blow, you can undo these bolts and then take it off with a flat blade screwdriver. You need to prise it up. You can see all the, the gunk underneath of the heat transfer compound. So if you were able to get another um, heating element, you would need to clean the new one and put lots of new heat transfer compound. Um, personally, I would say just buy another still, but again, it might be a lot more cost effective if you, if you can get hold of a heating element just to replace that. That's about it, really. Uh, I wouldn't advise lifting this up too much unless you want to start unscrewing and taking all of these out. Um, when you do lift it, though, it comes away. So you do need to make sure that it's, it's, it's not like that when you're trying to see it, that it is properly locked in place when you're putting the lid back on again. So there you go. That is how you strip down an air still and uh, what parts can be replaced. I hope you found it informational and I hope that your air still lasts as long as mine does because I'm quite chuffed that it's been eight years. They are really robust little units and uh, I do love my air still. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.